Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation in more than one way. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. We have x to the fourth power plus 8x plus 14 equals zero. As you can see, this is a quartic equation because of the fourth power. And quartic equation actually can be solved with a formula, but I don't think you want to know that. If you do want to know it, go ahead and look it up on Wikipedia. There is a gigantic formula. But the idea is we can reduce the degree, the power. So in other words, we can uh, go ahead and get a cubic equation from here, which is usually called the resolvent cubic for this quartic equation. Now, let's go ahead and see uh, how we can solve this problem in two ways. This is a very special equation. Notice that we are missing x to the third power and x to the second power, which is a really, really good thing. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. First method. My first method is going to be pretty straightforward, but guess what? It's going to be incomplete because there's a lot of work we need to do. So I'm going to leave it up to you as an exercise. Okay. I hope you don't mind. So the first method basically involves, because we're missing a lot of terms, it basically involves factoring this into two quadratics like this. X squared plus AX plus B because our polynomial is monic. And then the other factor, we're going to write it in such a way that there is no x cubed term. And that can be achieved by writing the second one as x squared minus ax. Now notice that this gives you a negative ax cube and this gives you a positive ax cube, which means they are going to cancel out. That's the whole idea, makes sense? And of course, you have to follow up with another constant because b and c don't have to be the same. But one thing we know, though, the constant term on the left-hand side is 14. On the right-hand side is BC. So BC equals 14 is a fact that you can derive from here. But we're going to derive more facts, more equations, because these are two polynomials that are equivalent for all values of x that are in the domain, which is the set of real numbers. Great. Let's go ahead and expand the right-hand side and just ignore x to the third power because you know that's going to cancel out. But if you don't want to ignore it, you can write it and then cancel it out, whichever you like. We're going to get x to the fourth power minus ax cubed plus ax cubed that are going to cancel out. And then we're going to have cx squared. That takes care of the first x squared. And then I'm going to distribute this ax uh, cubed, that already canceled out, minus a squared x squared, and then plus acx. And then finally, the constant term plus bx squared minus abx plus bc. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms x to the fourth power. We have this, this, and this. So it's going to be like b plus c minus a squared. That's going to be the coefficient of x squared. And then we have this and this, which is ac minus ab as the coefficient of x. And our constant term is bc. Okay, so far so good. Are you following? Now we're going to set it equal to this. Therefore, we'll be comparing the coefficients. The coefficient of x squared is, uh-oh, there's no x squared. Well, we already talked about it the coefficient of x squared is supposed to be zero because there is no x squared in our original equation. The coefficient of x is supposed to be eight and the constant term bc must equal 14. You get the idea? If you set those values equal to zero, eight, and 14, you're gonna be getting this equation exactly. Great, from here we get a system of equations which we should be solvable, right? Well, wishful thinking, that's what I call it. But one of them is gonna give us b plus c equals a squared. The second equation can be tweaked a little bit, factor out an a, and write this as c minus b equals 8. And from here, I would highly, highly recommend, if you want to solve this system, I would highly recommend that you isolate c minus b and write it as 8 over a, along with c plus b. I just switched them around, so elimination would look more obvious. And now, ta-da, we're going to do the magic touch, add these up, and eliminate b. c plus c is going to be 2c, or not 2c, and if you make a common denominator, you will get a squared uh, times a. So can I just write the answer? Skip that step, please. a cubed plus 8 all over a. Okay, that's equivalent to adding those two expressions. And that'll be the answer. But we have to divide both sides by 2 to get c. So c would be a cubed plus 8 divided by 2a. So that's going to be the value of c. And if you plug it in, or if you subtract these equations, you're going to notice that b can be written as a cubed minus 8 divided by 2a. So there's that kind of symmetry, uh, you know, between the b and the c. Now, they're kind of like conjugates, which is a good thing. 
because the next thing we need to look at is BC. So if you go ahead and multiply these two things and set it equal to 14, you're going to get an equation in A only. But that kind of looks like a hexic equation, but guess what? It's kind of bicubic because you're not going to have any uh, terms besides A to the sixth and A cubed. So that should be solvable. Well, actually, never mind, because you're going to get an A squared from the denominator. But guess what? If A is an integer, which I'm hoping it is, then you should be able to find its value just by trial and error. But again, this is a really long process, but you can go ahead and do it. And there's definitely another way to do this, but my second method is going to cover something else. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, because I think the second method is really, really cool, particularly for special types of equations like this one. It's awesome. I love it. So now here's how it works. And what do I mean by a special equation? I'll show you how. First of all, set the equation equal to zero. But my goal is going to be the factor to left-hand side. I have a cortic. I'm going to try to factor it. But how do I factor it? Am I going to get two quadratics again? Yes, but in a different way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and focus on uh, 14, first of all. I want you to notice first that 14 can be written as 16 minus 2, which is a perfect square minus 2. Now, pay attention to that fact because that 2 and the perfect square is going to come up. And then x to the fourth. Now, you can go ahead and add something to this to make it a perfect square along with 16. So I want to use 16 in my equation. So I'm going to put that down here. And what should go in the middle so that this becomes a perfect square? And the answer is 8x squared. Why? Because this is a perfect square. Isn't that, isn't that perfect? Now, to be able to make up for the extra term that we generated, though, I kind of need to do this. First of all, I need to get 14, so I need to subtract 2 from it. But that 2 is going to come up in a different way. So it's going to be like this. I'm going to be subtracting another perfect square from this. Maybe a semi-perfect square. What do I mean by that? First of all, I need to get rid of 8x squared. So I want to put uh, a 4x squared here. And I want to double it so that I can get a minus 8x squared. So, so far we're good, right? But I also want to be able to subtract 2 from it. And since I have a minus 2, I should have a plus 1 here. So which term should go in the middle? Again, that's a matter of asking like how you complete the square, and that should be 4x. And why is that happening? Because this is 4x, actually, uh, I messed up, sorry. It's supposed to be a minus sign because I do have a plus 8x, and there's a minus sign here, so I do need to double negate it. And yes, because this is now a perfect square. Do you see what I'm talking about? So this one is x squared plus 4 quantity squared, and this one is minus 2 times 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Now, why did I call this a semi-perfect square? Because of the presence of 2. Because 2 is not a perfect square, but we can get away with that because now this becomes a difference of 2 squared. If you consider that uh, 2 is square root of 2 squared, now you'll be able to factor this using difference of 2 squares. And remember, difference of 2 squared is a squared minus b squared, which can be broken down into a plus b and a minus b, and that's going to give you x squared plus 4, and then plus root 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1, and then this will be multiplied by x squared plus 4 minus root 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1. Same idea, but with a minus sign in between, so you get the difference of two squares from here. Now let's go ahead and rearrange the terms a little bit. This is going to give us plus 2 root 2x, and then plus 4 minus root 2, that's one of the factors. And the other factor is x squared minus 2 root 2x plus 4 plus root 2 equals 0. Now, you got two quadratics, and guess what? If you continue with the first method, you would be able to get these values, but guess what? C and B are not integers. And if you pay attention, when you multiply these two things, you get 16 minus 2 from difference of two squares again, which is 14. But finding those numbers would be really hard to uh, guess by guess and check. Okay? So now we have these two equations, and what do you think the solutions are? Okay, let's take a look. For example, I can solve this one. The other is going to be yours because they're going to be very, very similar. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared. That's going to be 8 when you square it. Minus 4 times a times c, which is 4 minus root 2. And that is, the whole thing is divided by 2. x is going to be negative 2 root 2 plus minus 8 minus 16, which is going to give you a negative 8, plus 
f4 root 2. Now here's one thing that is super duper important here, is negative 8 plus 4 root 2 positive, and you can tell by squaring both of these numbers. Now let's write it as 4, two, 4 root 2 minus 8. If you square this number, you get 16 times 2, which is 32. But if you square this number, you get 64. In other words, this is square root of 32, this is square root of 64. So their difference is negative, which means you don't get a real solution at all. And as you know, this channel is not about real numbers. I mean, I meant complex numbers. It's all about real numbers. And I have another channel, which is called A plus BI, because A plus BI is a complex number. Go ahead and check it out as well and let us know what you think about the other channel. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI. And bye-bye.